Michelle here from Shell McQuaid TV. We're helping you find ways to move from functioning to flourishing by putting the latest science to the real world test. Today, I'm delighted to have with me the author of a wonderful new book called Profit from the Positive, Proven Leadership Strategies to Boost Productivity and Transform Your Business. Margaret Greenberg is a sought-after executive coach by Fortune 500 companies. And after 15 years in the corporate world, she founded the Greenberg Group, a consulting firm dedicated to coaching business leaders and their teams to achieve more than they ever thought possible. She holds a Bachelor of Arts in Sociology and a Master's of Applied Positive Psychology. And her work's been featured in the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Huffington Post, Psychology Today, Talent Magazine, and many, many more. Margaret, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Michelle. Margaret, I so loved reading this book, and I so want to believe it's true that businesses can profit from the positive, but what did you really find when you were writing it? Can they profit from the positive, or is this a pipe dream? Most certainly they can profit from the positive. In fact, one of the things that's really important is that this book is backed up by the science of positive psychology. So it's not just another fad. It's not just um, our opinion on what works. This is all, all 31 tools in the book are backed up with science and they've been tested in businesses large and small. My co-author, Sanya Maiman, and myself, we're both executive coaches. She coaches on the West Coast of the US. I coast, uh, coach on the East Coast. And we've tested these out in with entrepreneurs, with large corporations, and they work. So do they improve the bottom line? Like I get that they feel good, we all like to feel good at better, but does it make a bottom line difference in these organizations? Absolutely, it's, it's not quite as easy to measure, of course, you can't just say, well, we did this particular uh, strengths a workshop for the team and now that translates into better sales. But one of the things that we do find is that when managers give frequent recognition and encouragement, one measure we have found is that it actually does boost productivity by over 40%. Wow. Now, I'm guessing well, that most organizations could boost productivity by 40%. That'd be pretty sad. <laughs> All right. And, and typically, organizations look at a uh, process to yeah. improve, yeah. right? They, they, they analyze the process and they improve it, which, I mean, is a great way to, you know, uh, you know reduce costs. Um, but we fail to often look at what we can do with the worker, yeah. right, to improve productivity. Yeah. So we're not anti-process. In fact, I, I spent a good part of the 90s actually doing process re-engineering. Um, but that's only one way to improve profits. And we're really missing out on, on a big productivity booster if we're not focusing in on people's strengths and we're not giving recognition and encouragement, among other things. So what surprised you most about how the executives and entrepreneurs you coach implemented some of the tools in Profit from the Positive? You mentioned sort of the frequent recognition there. How does that actually work? Yeah, um, it's interesting. The frequent recognition and encouragement, um, one of the things that surprised us is that people are actually calling it free now. We'll have clients say, you know, I gave a free today. I'm like, oh, really? So it's obviously uh, catching, catching on. Um, it's really easy to do. Um, but it has to be genuine. And one of the things we write about in Profit from the Positive is that when we do give feedback and recognition, it should be specific. And this is actually based on Carol Dweck's work about giving process praise rather than person praise. And we kind of, um, she talks a lot about, you know, the fixed mindset, uh, etc. We try to translate that language for our clients and use their terminology. And that's what we found works really well. We try to, we think of ourselves as translators for the business. So there are other things that you had to translate to help, um, help people actually use these tools that you found? Right. So as an example, I'll go back to um, uh, Dweck's work, which we love, uh, the fixed um, versus the growth mindset. Um, that language didn't really resonate with our business clients. But when we started talking about what if you were more of a learner? rather than growth, right? If you put on your learner hat in this situation, what might that do? Uh, versus the expert hat, uh, which um, she refers to as kind of more of the performance um, mindset. So just translating things for people and putting it in their language, we found very helpful. The other surprising thing 
was just how easy it was to implement these tools. Michelle, people didn't need this big fanfare or some program du jour, or they had to get their boss's approval and go through all this red tape. They could just do it. We, we call them our positive deviants. Yeah. They could just go in and start doing this because it doesn't cost any money. Yeah. And they could just start bringing some of these tools to the workplace, and, and then it became contagious. Yeah. It would start to spread like, why is that team over there? Why do they seem to be having so much fun and they get great results? Yeah. What, what is it about that team? So people get curious about these positive deviants and they share what they're doing and, and it spreads. So the contagious nature of it has been really, really surprising and fun to see. I love that idea that you don't need someone's permission to start. You just need to choose to show up and experiment with these ideas and see what happens. So as a business coach, what are your three favorite ways to help your clients bring a little more positivity into their work days, perhaps especially when their organizations aren't geared for that kind of thing? Right. Well, Michelle, a lot has been written about strengths and talked about. So that is one of my favorites, but I'm going to skip over that one because there's a lot, right? We, we talk a lot about strengths. So I'm going to skip that one. Instead, I'm going to focus on three other ones. Uh, one of my favorites when I work with, with clients is to get them to focus in on what's going right, or we call it capitalize on what's going right. So for example, in business, we're really good at diagnosing the problem over in that region or over in that department, right? We're really good at it and we identify the root causes and we brainstorm solutions and, right, and we implement this new idea and we're really, really good at that. But Michelle, we don't spend the same amount of rigor to studying what's going right. Like, why is that office over there, why are they getting exceptional results? Or why is that territory or region over in that country really getting fabulous results? What if we studied what they're doing and figure that out? Or when it comes to uh, interviewing and hiring um, staff, you know, why don't we study the people that do the job really, really well? And what is it about those people besides their technical competence what are some of those more intangibles that are really required for you to be successful in this job? So capitalize and studying on what's going right, I'd say, is, is one of my absolute favorites. And it's so simple. And when, when, I, when I ask, when I suggest this to people, they're really quite, geez, I don't know, why haven't we ever thought of that before? Right? Or even like in IT organizations. I love this. A lot of them will do. Um, post-mortems, they call it, after a project review, right? And like, let's study what went wrong so that we can fix it next time around. And it's like, okay, that's important. We can learn from that. But what if we also studied what went right with that project? Because typically we skip those projects that come in on time and on budget. We don't even bother doing a post-mortem, <laughs> right? We're like, oh, good. That, oh, thank God that came in. And we just skip on to the next one. Yeah. Well, I, I, we really believe there's a lot to be learned by studying what's going right. So that's number one. Yeah. Uh, number two, um, I'm going to go back to the free again, is yes. absolutely yeah. one of my favorites, the frequent recognition and encouragement. And I won't say any more about that. I already covered it, but that truly is one of my favorites. And it's so easy to do. And one of the things we learned from one of the executives we interviewed um, was this concept called praise to the back. Uh, we often, in, in this country, we talk about stab in the back. Uh, well, we talk about, in Profit from the Positive, praise to the back. This was a, a term coined by one of the executives we work with. And the notion is that our feedback that we give, I can give it directly to you or to my peer or to some, my direct report, um, but I can also share it with others, even when that person isn't present. Yeah. And it'll come back. It'll reverberate back to them. I love and that idea. Right? It can be just as positive. Yeah. So we call it praise to the back. So that, that's a piece of free that, I, that I, I really love, and so does Senya. And then the last one, I would say it has to be about meetings because we spend an inordinate amount of time in meetings. Uh, in this country, it's estimated that managers spend up to 75% of their time in meetings. And... Others will say we actually waste up to 50% of that time in meetings, right? They're very unproductive, right? Boring, awful, dreadful. And especially like when we're doing it virtually, 
And many of us, you know, uh, especially if it's, you know, by phone, we, we put the phone on mute, we start <laughs> typing away, right? So we really don't uh, engage the hearts and minds of people in meetings. But one thing that you can do that we've tested out is we call it, um, one of the 31 tools of the book is called um, Start Your Meetings with a Sizzle, meaning um, you can't expect that everybody's going to be really engaged, right, at the start. So years ago, we used to do icebreakers, mm -hmm. right? With a facilitator would come in and do an icebreaker. And sometimes it was kind of lame. And then other times, you know, it was pretty good. Well, even when you hold your own meeting, not an offsite, not something with a facilitator, but you can start by focusing on something positive. And, and I'll give you an example. So go around the room and quickly say, what's the best thing that's happened, Michelle, since we talked last week? or what are you most proud of that occurred last week? Uh, any kind of prompt. You might even get, use it as an opportunity to give a free, right? I want to recognize Michelle for something that she did or another team member. And the leader of the group, you can take the pressure off yourself by not feeling like you've got to come up with these all the time. Um, it really is effective when it gets rotated amongst the team members to come up with the prompt. And oftentimes people will say, oh, my gosh, Margaret, how can we do that? That's going to eat up so much meeting time as it is. And I say, no. You, I like to call it the, the lit match technique. Yeah. You have a lit match, and you don't want to burn your finger. Yeah. So let's quickly do this. Not everybody has to contribute. In fact, if everybody did, it would really – it would take too much time. But it's a way to really get the meeting off to a great start. And, and this is based upon the work of Barb Fredrickson, the whole broaden and build. It's a way to apply her work that what we know is that when people are in a positive emotional state, it improves their thinking. They're better brainstormers. They're more creative. I mean, have you ever tried to brainstorm with somebody when they're in a lousy mood? It doesn't work. <laughs> it's so hard. Uh, you can't be done. So this is just a way to make sure that everybody that's showing up at your meeting, especially when you have a really difficult project to tackle or you really need their best thinking, Starting your meeting with a positive prompt or with a sizzle yeah. is a great way um, to get things moving. So those are like my three like favorites. I think they're great. And as someone, when I was uh, doing the Masters in Applied Post Psych that you did and learning about some of that science while I was managing a team in a very difficult environment, I can attest to having used those kind of approaches and them having incredible results. And we used to start our team meeting with the question, what's working well? Uh, and again, was a great way just to inject positivity in the room. And when I shared some of the research that you've mentioned with the team, they decided that one of the things we'd do for, we used to have a big monthly meeting with quite a lot of other people involved, was they wanted to start it with a funny quiz each time. And uh, they, this was a branding team, so the quiz used to just be three silly questions, but they'd be brand related, or can you spot that brand, or what ad did this brand uh, run, can anyone sing the ad, or... And at the end of the meetings, you get the answers and awarded points for it. So, again, it was really silly. I only took a couple of minutes, but uh, people started being on time to the meeting just for the chance to play the game. So it was very I funny to witness. It. <laughs> what a difference by asking things like that, what's going right, versus, um, so, Michelle, what, what's keeping you up at night? Exactly, yeah. Right. And where is it going wrong things. then? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Margaret, for joining us. Thank you, Michelle. Bye-bye. Bye. I highly recommend Profit from the Positive for anyone who wants to make their work a little more engaging, more effective and more enjoyable. It contains three great sections that covers what you can do for you, your team and your organisation. Make sure you check out their website, ProfitFromThePositive.com, which has plenty of free resources that you can use. And for all the latest research, join Profit from the Positive on Facebook. Thank you so much for joining me this week. If you want more tested, practical and playful ways that you can move from functioning to flourishing, be sure to check out michellemcquade.com, leave your name and email address so you can hear all our news first. Until next time, remember you are good enough, so don't be afraid to let your light shine. Take care.